scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Whatever trends is what you will hop into. Is God blessing us this morning? An encounter with God creates convictions. An encounter with God creates patterns the edge of any effective ministry among other things is the pattern we win generally in life not necessarily by the dexterity of the army but the flawlessness of the strategy it is also true spiritually i know a man of god who i think he once listened to my teaching where i was talking about the fact that you may not see any poster of koinonia here and there and the guy got up with zeal without knowledge and went to tell his people who said no you know if apostle can do it i can do it and then they refused they they said no visitors sleep again no um uh, what they call it uh, flyer he even truly speaking cancelled they have what they call a follow-up department cancelled everything say god cannot bring them by and the guy was suffering terribly terribly it wasn't even him that reached out to me it was someone else that reached out to me and said please you will need to help my pastor i think something is wrong let it not be that it's your message that is confusing this man and i said no you see there is a difference between a doctrine and a personalized dealing there are blueprints that god gives you on account this is one of the benefits of the secret place there are things that god will give you customized to your work with god it is an error if you build a doctrine out of it most of the traditions that destroy the body today started as personalized dealings that god gave men because of my work with god listen carefully it's possible that to create efficiency god can tell me you my son do not have more than three children this is my dealings for you i have weighed it and seen that your most efficient state will be with three children only now when i take that person because of the efficiency that comes by keeping in what to what god told me i will now say look the most recommended way to be effective in ministry is to have three children whereas the destiny of the next prophet is in the fifth child tradition will stop a prophet from coming to bless a generation preachers let's learn this this is why encounters are powerful i'm still buttressing on encounters that god will teach you the difference there are things god has told me you will never 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 hear me tell anybody it's between me and god it's like a code of operation come pastor it's like a spiritual system of operation so the for william branham listen for william branham there was a way that the angel of the lord will come in a meeting are we together now william branham will wait to for a long time praise and worship the worship team is singing and the guy will just wait what are you waiting for he says waiting for the angel it was a pattern and as soon as the angel came that's it his eyes if that angel did not come sir this man it will be like a champ he can't see 
now by the time we create a ministry out of that and you now mentor people that the only way to minister is to wait for the coming of william branham's angel are you seeing that now before you know it a spirit will come as that angel because these spirits can appear as angels of light this is how many people got into error subconsciously so an angel will come and tap you and say i'm here now this guy's name is femi you say what's your name femi you say this thing is working i mean i can't, I can't believe this you didn't go into error knowingly not understanding the difference between a doctrine you don't change doctrines they are they are principles defined by god's integrity but because of the unique nature of man as an entity god will have to create a system a curriculum unique to you that's why every man must know god for himself i know men of god who don't worship this is a distraction to them you are playing that and clashing symbols they say two of you go out of my meeting please don't distract me and you are wondering how in the world is this guy going to heal the sick you keep watching you just keep watching the moment is time he will tell you it's time and from nowhere you will see people flinging wheelchairs and there are people when there is no keyboard when there is nothing playing you will truly think that they used to carry charms they will stand and look helpless and powerless benny him up until today huh benny him you see the way this protocol guy stand you stand in front in benny him's meeting like that he will send you away he doesn't want all of that they choose those who sit in front he doesn't want anybody when you are sharing and he's seeing the voice of unbelief are you sure go to the back go to the back fast go to the back you must understand this these are the products of an encounter they will you're dealing with god then you know what to he will separate between personalized dealings and doctrines so every time you are teaching your personalized dealings you put a disclaimer this is to support your understanding not just to create a pathway are we together now papa ear deboe kneels down when he's about to preach it's not in the bible paul bows his knees to pray for the people but because of his work with god and a system he created by the wisdom of the spirit to acknowledge god it is all right if you have the revelation for it but there are many people as they are kneeling down you know that this person is just doing nonsense sometimes they don't even pray they just kneel down and rest their head and stand up to fulfill the ritual everybody say patterns you must know god for yourself i can tell you not only when an anointing comes to the place but what anointing and it will not always be by visions these are things that cannot exactly be taught they were products of the secret place i was trained by the spirit to recognize anointings i can know what anointing is in a place it's not everything you say that you see i remember the first time i started seeing angels please listen i didn't see angelic beings i started seeing like you know how a ribbon is you know how you know how children play with ribbons this is what i was seeing i didn't even understand what i was seeing until i stayed in the secret place and then i remembered that angels move in the similitude of light and then god started helping me even before i started seeing angels read but today there's a lot of lies people say i'm seeing an angel standing they are even saying jesus is standing here jesus you go and read your bible and see what happened to men when they saw him in his glory nobody saw jesus in his glory and just stood like that laughing no. let me tell you if an angel appears here or any spirit being if one eye can see it that doorway that interface that has been created must create a reaction 
the rest may not see but they will know something has happened look at paul saul of tarsus the moment jesus appeared he was the only one seeing him the rest just found out they were falling what in the world is going on here because that pattern is not there we have to invent lies lie word of knowledge lie prophecy lie anything because we have been taught that once you can prophesy ministry will be lucrative it's dangerous everybody say encounters you must know god for yourself that when you stand and tell people god will bless you you know the god you are talking about and the fact that he can bless you listen the god of abraham isaac jacob must become your god there is a name that your experience must give God. That name is the dimension he will flow with in your ministry. You hear Kenneth Copeland when he's ministering, he can just turn and say, yes, sir, I'm hearing you, sir. As if he's talking to his friend. It's his way of knowing God and that encounter that he's had with God. Are we learning something this morning? This is very important. So we need a revelation of an encounter with who God is. Ministry can be extremely distracting. It is your knowledge of God that keeps you in focus. Do you know you can succeed in ministry as an art? The same way you become a tailor. The same way you become a, a chef, you can become a minister, a preacher, a dispenser of teachings. And there is no life, there is no power. Unfortunately, members have enough discernment to know whether you are connected to life while you speak. At first, it will start like a dissatisfaction. The wedding in Cana and the wine finished preaching is still going on and somehow that life the life giving factor in your communication that is is only obtainable in the secret place is not there while you teach truth so you find out that what you are teaching is true but the corresponding transformation is not coming ask anyone you know who is close to me i don't sit down preparing sermons just by saying no i think this is nice um first corinthians this i think they would like to hear this wow this is wonderful brilliant amazing i mean this and that and that i've been preaching for a while and let me tell you sincerely it is possible for me to sit down and not open my bible and not study and except god reveals to you by word of knowledge you will not know like i said it's an art when you have been opening a book a long time you are not too dull some scripture would have been in your head just because what you are saying is correct does not mean it is anointed encounters encounters you must make room for god in your life if you want to be effective as a man of god listen to me we have a space pastor for our cars even if you have 10 cars you put a garage for them we have a storehouse where we keep food we have a place for our jewelries ladies jewelries no matter how small the room is there is a small box or something we have where we hide money even if it is in a pit somewhere but there is no space for god in our lives and our environment we smuggle him through any way and say god you just manage it and he looks at the space you have for your car he looks at the space you have for your clothes and he says where is my own place where is my own place ministry is an overflow of your secret place ministry true ministry is an overflow of your experience with god impactful ministry is an overflow of your experience with god listen ministry is not teaching necessarily not preaching necessarily not just healing the sick necessarily 
but the transformation that can come to a people and a territory on account of your knowing God and your understanding his ways this is ministry every other channel they are just platforms they are support systems the life giving part of ministry is your knowledge of God there are men of God who can be so busy one meeting here one leadership meeting here and there you are concentrating on the support structures we'll talk about that a little but i need the, the epicenter the pivotal point of a ministry is a man's knowing god so i know you are preparing for ministry not just because you are buying banners and suits not even when you are painting your office and putting a chair i know you are preparing for ministry to the degree to which your hunger and your passion for god is growing i look at your secret place and i know the efficiency that will come from ministry let me tell you why this is powerful our generation is unforgiving about mediocrity if they give a chance to hear god from you and you mess up it will take mercy to bring you back to that stage there are too many alternatives today gone are the days where you have only one voice and they have to make do with that voice right now the moment you don't dispense truth there are scattered around the entire globe are people who are serious with god his presence the gift and the blessing that comes from knowing him his power that comes from a relationship you know i i shared with you um, my story you may have heard me say it one time where i used to stay uh, in the quarters a, a few years ago um i have this neighbor here and there he's also involved in um uh, what do i call it now it may not be fair to call him a herbalist would i say he's a herbalist but he does well you you know what i'm talking about isn't it yes and he believes he helps people with it you know and he has helped people he told me his whole track record that he goes to lagos and does all of that and so when i came to stay there things started really going bad for him because nobody was coming there again and then one night this is true he just came and just knocked on my door and i came out and in a very personal way he said look you know the way his life is going now kai this thing is not really working and he was talking to me whether there was a a possibility for collaboration and there was a way i could like lend him whatever i was using it's true it's very true and so i laughed i told him i said sir i understand he said his own is a gift they inherited it from their own father so it's not some he's not a bad man let me he's one of the nicest men i know till date he's a wonderful man so i'm not talking of an um an evil man in terms of maybe character no he's a sincere person and I told him, I said, in this life, in this faith walk, the power you get is not something that is in your hand, independent of God. It comes from a relationship. It's like an intercourse where the woman's pregnancy is dependent on her meeting her husband. Are you getting what I'm saying now? You can go to a herbalist and collect power and don't even know his name. I came because I'm in trouble. He says, do you have the goat? The black goat is here. What else? Here and gives you the charm and you leave but that's not the way it is with god when you come and say god give me your hand he said take my heart first it starts with my heart you find my hand in my heart very important whatever has the possibility of destroying listen destroying your love your hunger your passion for more of god you have to trust God for grace to create a system around it and throw it out of your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's powerful. The most destructive things that can kill a man of God are not evil things. They are good things. Evil things you can easily detect and run back. Pride, lust, you can run back to the secret place. But money, accolades, you will read the scripture and say this is what should happen to a man when you are serious so you will believe god is working and you will not grow satan will always use something good to destroy you he will seldom use something evil it will be too noticeable everybody say encounters 
very powerful. God bless you, Pastor. From your encounter will also come your message, the message or your mandate. Please write it down. To make sustainable impact in a territory, in a generation, you must have what we call the message, not a message. You can have messages, you can have sermons, but what is the message? Every great man I know, no matter how vast in spiritual truths, has a central theme that represents the communication of what God has granted him access to see, to know, and to communicate to a generation. Are we together now? Pastor Fred was saying something very instructive when he came here. It truly is important. You see, the best of any minister is only an effective minister. There is no how you can see all of God from one standpoint. So he distributed his dimensions across the body. And no matter how effective you are, no matter how vast you are in knowledge, you will have to be compelled by the spirit to stay and understand God in a dimension. When you mention Joshua Selman, you don't think relationship and marriage and this. No. Doesn't mean I don't know anything about it. But I'm not an expert. It's a waste of time. If you invite me there, somebody will be shouting while I'm saying, let us pray. And that's not what you plan for. People are sitting in a round table with Jews. And not. Have you ever seen anyone invite me for a Valentine talk? No. Does that mean I don't know what to say about relationship and marriage? You will be joking. When you are sick and you are lost, Benihin comes. When you are weak and there's no faith working in you, Kenneth Copeland comes. Are we together now? When there are all sorts of oppressions in your life, Dr. D.K. Olukoya comes. When your life is scattered and you need mercy fast, Papa Kumui will come with one message. How many? One. One message you will hear. You won't know whether to stand or to sit down or to lie down. Listen. Nobody rewards you until you brand your impact constructively. Are you getting what I'm saying now? impact cannot be haphazard you must brand it with the unique dimension of god committed to you i should be able to did you look at all the men of god that came here right from yesterday you can almost speak the unique grace the unique operation everybody said the message the message represents why you exist as a ministry you must have the message what did god send you to do he sent me to preach the gospel no that's not your message that's the great commission it wasn't given to you it was given to all of us or a robot said every time he would say this my assignment is to take the healing power of jesus to the nations and the pattern for dispensing it is by laying on of hands even if you were ten thousand he will not pray like Benny Hinn and then take testimonies. He will lay hands one by one. That's why he succeeded. He was one time the greatest healing evangelist in the United States. T.L. Osborne was granted that grace to communicate the message. His entire ministry was centered around the message of the saving, the healing, and the delivering power of Jesus. When you listen to Samadayemi, even if Samadhi holds a business, I mean a, a healing service, in that healing service, he must mention value. That the power of God has come to give you value. Oh, his, his lingua franca will betray him. It will rebrand him back. You are not ready to be honored when there is confusion as to what you represent to the body so you must have a message it must be clear the bible says write the vision 
make it plain so that he will run that reads it these are very simple truths but you need to understand this the message a flourishing and an impactful ministry must have a message hill song many of you know hill song because of their music they are not just singers they have an exact message and the message is to see jesus glorified as simple as that all their songs are centered around the cross and the finished work of christ that's all they sing about don muen listen to him very carefully don muen the entire scope of his music ministry is not just to reveal jesus but also to communicate hope and life you listen to his songs he never sleeps he never slumbers so that among the many artists we have when you really need hope you know who to go to it's very important the message number two the second ingredient that will make a sustainable ministry is a strong leadership and an organizational structure now please pay attention we started well by talking about our knowledge of god our encounter from which comes the message from which comes the pattern from which comes our convictions as powerful as all that i just said is if you do not have a strong leadership structure well structured with clear tasks and expectations you may fail this i believe is where i will want to take a pause and honor so many ministries that have poured into my life in this area especially the house on the rock truly speaking i honor them for this one thing because based on my background there was no there was no system to stimulate leadership and excellence are we together now yes but as god began to grant me access to truths and quality relationships he began to help me to see the need for effective leadership when it was time for people to eat bread jesus said let the people sit down in 50s why because if you have a crowd of five thousand people and everybody tries to collect that bread they will kill you and kill the messiah if they can and eat the bread if there is no order one person's appetite will eat one basket they sat down and wastage was minimized it's important you cannot just allow anything to happen from and by everybody in ministry no there has to be a system spiritual people have this problem anointed men and women of god are some of the most disorganized people as ministers why because of the excellency you know when you truly are anointed and you have a message people will forgive every other thing and just endure but it doesn't mean they were designed to be that way Is somebody getting what i'm saying leadership to the extent that the secret to scattering the sheep is not to chase them is just to strike the shepherd that's all when god wants to destroy i mean the devil wants to destroy a sheep he does something to the shepherd and that's it moses was weary leading about 2.5 million people he was tired he was fagged out and he went and was frustrated and jethro his father-in-law came to him and said mister you are going to weary yourself everything you are involved in you are a human being he said set captains over thousands over hundreds over fifties and he created that leadership structure let them be the ones to handle some of the issues in the early church there was a very intelligent organogram where the apostles were not allowed to be involved in matters of tables when the grecian women remember and the, the women began to fight in every organization once a crowd is more than 12 get ready the humanity of men will play it is leadership that will solve it not prayer 
for as long as there are one two three four five six seven it is possible for dr emeka to hit me unknowingly who do i report to there is nobody i report to myself and i react back by saying mr man the next time you hold me i will kill you and he will prove to me that he's a doctor you see that chaos and anarchy many times we forget that we are spiritual but we are also human leadership was designed to manage the humanity of men i hope you know divorce now i'm not talking about marriage and i don't want to talk about a very touchy area but i'm saying that was the extent of moses's leadership he found out that things were happening he could not understand and he said lord please permit me i'm going to have to invent a strategy because in this camp of 2.5 million some people have been beating their wives in a way that i don't think my conscience will allow and then god said okay in that case let there be a certificate that will mean that the people have been separated it was not god's original idea but for the sake of peace and organization moses had to invent a strategy leadership is very powerful it makes ministry easy leadership helps you to identify what is wrong you can't blame everybody for one person's mistake if the sounds go off i can't begin to quarrel you and say sam why did the sound go off that's none of his business are you seeing that now when Achan carried part of the treasures in Jericho that should not be carried there was a system of isolating them from tribe to clan until it came to his family it would have been unfair to punish everybody but leadership provided an opportunity to isolate where the trouble was to deal with it when there is no leadership you will blame you will sabotage the creativity and the effort of others because of one person's mistake there has to be clearly defined tasks and expectations let me tell you this never provide an office when there is no need for it whether it's in an organization or it is in ministry do not create an office when there is no need for it human beings cannot stand being idle and they will find something to do a church of say 100 people should not be having pro1 pro2 vice president admin vice president this vice president that the work can effectively be done by two or three people the other seven or ten people will have to look for a way to be relevant is intrinsic in the human to feel that he's making progress and they will have to invent assignments or tamper with other job descriptions for a long time there was no public relations department in this ministry the protocol department was doing the work of five departments because we had not seen a need to create it as God began to bless the ministry, the need came. And now we had to carve out a department that responds and represents our presence to the international community. Very, very important. There is something called due season for things. And by the time you create leadership structures that is not yet the season for them you are going to cause a lot of trouble chaos and anarchy if you're with me please say amen, amen. well structured with clear tasks and expectations let me give you an advice that i learned following a pastor's conference i think it's a very instructive advice allow for creativity but never without supervision you cannot indefinitely allow people to be creative and just to continue to invent strategies without supervision because their creativity will stretch them sometimes to go out of the pattern given to you by god so it is good that people become and remain creative 
but that their creativity must be within the jurisdiction of the the order that was given to you if you allow people there are things they will do that will get to a point where god will ask you who sent you in this ministry for instance i'm someone who is very comfortable to allow our precious people and they know i love them with all my heart to be able to come up with their ways i don't unnecessarily interrupt there is a level of autonomy within the various departments but never without supervision you don't invent an idea and execute it like that no everybody say leadership this is very very important number three The third key that is responsible for making sustainable impact in ministry is to understand your execution strategy. Now, these things I'm teaching are very powerful. They are not my opinions necessarily. They are truths that I've gleaned from ministries that have worked based on God's standard and even by the standard of success i've had the privilege by the grace of god to study the largest and most impactful churches in every continent execution strategy that means the strategies you put in place that will allow that vision to come to pass there are three things under this number one your execution strategy is what will invent the activities of the ministry within that season every activity should not be receivable just because a church is doing it a man of god is doing it does not just mean you just ship it and bring it no your programs the subdivisions of the ministry and the various activities in the ministry they come from your execution strategy how god said to do what you should do you see for instance in the miracle service we we didn't start submitting prayer requests eventually god gave me this and said it's an opportunity to be able to pray for the people so every miracle service we collect the request representing the pain of the people and we cry before the lord here and you can tell the testimonies that have come out of it almost every worker if not every worker in this ministry knows the subdivisions of the ministry they are not a secret both the ones for the future and now it is very clear there is an exact leadership organogram that defines the various subdivisions of the ministry these are the platforms through which the purposes of god as committed to us will be executed everybody say execution strategy you need it in business you need it in 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 your organization not just church under execution strategy again is your culture and ethics your culture and your ethics make part of your execution strategy how do you behave what is the modus operandi of the ministry in as much as we frown at tradition in as much as we frown at religion no organization becomes impactful until their impact is systematized are we together i have had the privilege to visit um the churches of all the men of god represented here and for every one of the churches there is a culture there is an ethic I humorously say it you don't find someone in koinonia just because i'm teaching and he's touched he will not just sit down with 1000 naira and hold it from where he is and just throw it and say let it get to the altar no it's not a culture it's not the way it's not the blueprint that god has given to us are we together don't i hope i hope you are not you're understanding what i'm saying it's very important when you go to the bank they have a system 
of walking. They have their work ethics. They greet you and smile, tired or not. It's a system. They are paid to do it. If something falls on the ground now, not everybody will come to pick it. Are we together now? There is a system for picking it. There is a department whose jurisdiction also make for remedying this kind of thing. Most people do not have a culture. They do not have ethics. Let me tell you this. Culture and an ethic is a system of standardization. That means everywhere koinonia service is held, there should be an expected behavior. There should be an expected pattern. I have seen ministries. Look at this. I have seen ministries where a whole service is like 10 churches in one. Now, you would think nothing is wrong with that. The guy who does the opening prayer invents his way of doing it. And he does it maybe the way he saw somebody who mentored him. The guy taking the praise and worship can choose to just do something. And say, Pastor, come up. Me and Pastor, we are going to dance. Are you seeing that now? He thinks it's supposed to be a very nice thing. He says, you, you must dance. Or someone can come up and sing worship. And because he's taught, say, everybody kneel down. Everybody in the whole church kneel down. His presence is here. You see, those kinds of things destroy your you are anointed but you may never go far you will know you are wrong when you start a tv ministry when there is an angry person from one nation who will write you and tell the government ban this man he's, he's communicating wrong values to the people a culture there has to be a way of working is someone learning this now you systematize your impact when you have a culture train your workers train your workers give them the flexibility to be creative but you must train them when you are coming to perform a function what is the protocol for what you are doing if you are in house on the rock many of you have been there you would notice they have a system for collecting their offerings for praying for all of this based on the blueprint that was given beautiful system saves time the moment you give offering you pass it to the priest on the aisle and he stands and the ushers just walk pick it up and it's done there are churches their own pattern now regardless of efficiency their pattern is you first go outside are we together and then you give whatever key is comfortable to the music director and then you begin to dance you are liberty to choose how fast or how slow you want to dance and one person would dance and go back and dance and go back and listen listen i hope you are getting what i'm teaching you there are many things we do that at a localized platform they can forbear it but if you want to be global you must adjust not violate your convictions but you must be able to adjust to minister to people. What kind of songs should you sing? You can't leave everybody to his creativity to just raise any song. And say, I just heard a song this morning and I really like it. You will learn it now. Say this and that. And that song may not be compliant with the values as revealed by God to the ministry. Are we together? ethics how do you behave when wealthy people come into that church how do you behave when politicians come what is the system of receiving them what is the system of welcoming them you don't wait till they come then you start thinking what do we do with this guy now no if if the governor of this state or if someone now is going to come what is the system if you don't learn this god cannot bring influential people under your care if someone comes to testify up here and says god bless me i have a job i mean i have created jobs right now i have the power in fact i'm thinking about it between now and next month i'm even looking for about 300 people to give them jobs what do you think will happen to those who are not employed they will wait for him after service they've already come with their cv for prayer so straight 
they will just go outside and waylay that person and others may find his address and just come and knock many pastors have refused to come back to certain churches because of what the members did after the service they follow them to their house and say sorry i'm not don't be offended i i just i don't know if you can help me zip my house sir. the way god has blessed you no culture no ethic i'm going to share something and please pastor stand up pastor dan don't be embarrassed yesterday after the meeting the protocol came and met me they packed all kinds of um some i think it was a gift or so they brought for him and the wife and then they gave him and said kai you blessed me take sir he refused to collect it he said give the protocol i am here to learn i am here to grow and when the protocol met me i looked i said oh what a wise man i said whatever we can add to this and bless it let us give him and honor him you see that a man of god that is in discipline can come to another man's house listen very carefully i went to a particular church and a young man gave me a car i said no 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 i'm not collecting this car go and give the car to your pastor and bless him when he went to the pastor and said sir god spoke to me to give apostle this the pastor called me and said apostle this gentleman is serious he wants to bless you with the car i said well whatever it is are you in agreement with this sir culture anytime i go to a ministry and i want to do anything that i believe or i know is not the usual practice i will usually seek for permission from the man of god or if i can come stand with him these are things that you have to learn it's not all about anointing 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 there are systems the first system of recovery for a mighty army was the coming back of the skeletons the structure are we together just like pastor fred shared when you enter a man's house listen no matter how great you are if you are in someone else's house you have to work with their system if they remove their shoes outside take off your shoes i remember the time i went to minister in cherubim and seraphim i was invited to minister there and they were all happy that i was coming and i blessed god for it as soon as i got there you know our dear people there said no 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 apostle enter with your shoes i said why why should i enter with my shoes i took off my shoes because that is the protocol i learned this from dr modok protocol is important adaptation is proof of honor when you come to a ministry don't come at your terms have the flexibility to bend to the practice i never come to a church and then i'm just excited because of my relationship with the pastor i just get up i hold the mic i say god wants to move choir just and you sit down and wait for your time if they call you to take offering don't give word of knowledge let us pray father we bless you for this and that and that when you finish god bless you that's it pray for children don't start talking about marriage and pregnancy pray for children and leave that place as the lord has granted me grace to minister in certain platforms i'm seeing the strictness of complying with these principles because here there are people that can be a bit free but in those places there are people who have earned the right to be offended when you violate their privacy in the name of spirituality is someone learning something execution you must know how to behave and how to function within any organization you must know and you must create a system that way how do they reach you if i want to invite you now and i don't have a relationship with you what is the system to reach you many ministries do not have official lines there's no system of reaching them if you are starting you can use your line for many years i handled my ministrations invitations myself because i didn't see a need to have all of that as as time went and i couldn't handle it again i transferred the responsibility to the protocol department there must be a culture 
and there must be an ethic are we together the third under execution strategy is priorities please don't be tired of what i'm teaching you we are soon going to pray if you truly want to be effective if you came here this morning it's not just for prayer and impartation is to know the ways of god and to excel these are the inner working systems that make for efficiency priorities that means your focus and your emphasis for the now it's not everything god gave you that you can do now there are things god will tell you that is for 10 years koinonia is going to have a tv ministry we're going to have schools we're going to have all kinds of things but for now for now this is the assignment allocated for now and so we restrict ourselves listen the resources that god will give you will always be sufficient for your program for now there are many ministries that do not have priorities and focus a ministry just starts and in one year you may be holding five conferences you may do very well except for the fact that the ministry finance may never rise the entire collection for that ministry in a year at that level may be maybe five million and now you are organizing a program and you are bringing two men of god from the u.s and the two will come with their keyboardists they will come with other people the man himself will fly first class you see that and the pa he can decide and call you and say my son has been crying that he needs to see nigeria you know what that means once a baby can walk he's a passenger full payments like the adults now you pay all of that and you continue to stretch members are you seeing what makes many members run away from the church the program will be powerful but in the end of it is always on deficit always on deficit you cannot build and you cannot grow that way some guys one day i think it was last year very nice group of friends that started to pray and they really believed that they were praying for a revival to come to their land and they sent a text they said apostle we need you in this land and we are going to bring you silver and gold we don't have but what we have I think, just just stop this there don't don't make a fool out of yourselves there are many anointed men of god in that region they will ignore them because they think they are not anointed you see that there is a, there is somebody at your level that can serve the purposes of god have the humility to enjoy that grace and grow as time and wealth and wisdom allows even as i am now as a man of god i know my boundaries spiritually financially sociologically i will be stupid to do certain things and engage certain things faith is not foolishness you must know your boundary and respectfully stay there i will not get up right now and then go to Port or go anywhere and say i'm doing a city-wide crusade or go to the u.s and say everybody come and fill this stadium it's called vain glory you must get to a point where you know that god has tried for me but i'm still growing are we together there are many times during our leaders meeting you know we can share a few things that we want to execute and many times my people will just hear me keep quiet over the issue once i shelve an issue they know that's it leave it there It's very very important priorities what do we do now god these are all the things you have said we'll do but which do we start with first what do we do now so number one is an encounter that births your message your convictions your patterns number two strong leadership that makes your impact systemic three an execution strategy that defines your activities defines your culture and ethics 
defines your priorities number the fourth one is your system of reach i call it your marketing a system of marketing and reach now please listen because many of us men of god are trusting god for increased membership we are trusting god to honor us with more and more people there is a strategy growth does not just happen like that there are forces that must be engaged for growth to happen your marketing and reach what does that mean how do you let your world know you are there the people will not come when they do not know you are there the bible says and it was noised abroad that jesus was in town and it was noised abroad the lord gave the word he says great is the company of them that published it this is very important please listen no ministry will excel and thrive in today's world if you do not have an intentional system for your reach and your marketing this includes business the first way that you reach people now let me talk about ministry i'm focusing this on ministry i apologize for other you know um other areas of purpose the most effective way i know to really draw people is the power of results genuine results genuine results everybody say genuine results please say it say it. don't sleep say genuine results mm. two interesting people in scripture and the way they marketed jesus please sit down sir i'm sorry he's been standing all through i'm sorry sir look up please everyone once upon a time there was a madman in a city called gadara that madman was hidden in caves they would tie him and he would hurt himself and jesus crosses to the other side and the first person he meets is that madman after a conversation with him the madman is delivered are we together now and commotion is in the town because people lose immediately those who who owned the pigs they just lost and there was all kinds of things this man the bible said because of the impact of what happened he went and gathered 10 cities how many cities imagine that one striking work of the kingdom upon your life gathering people let me tell you there are people who they are more than a microphone everybody knows about their challenges and their predicaments and when god touches them it becomes too notable people will always come to find out who did this testimonies are attractive they have a magnetic property they can draw men how did the scribes know that jesus will be in this city and you'll be having a program notice the scribes never sat outside they were always early for the meeting they followed the ministry of jesus followed the details they would hear that god did this today tomorrow he did this tomorrow he did that this is where i will want to bring a little balance there is no other means of marketing and reach that will be more effective than a transformed life please listen to me the greatest way to invite people is to transform those you have you are not going to pray for more people to come and join the pile of lack of transformation change the people the greatest testimony that that really blesses me in ministry it's not that the sick were healed sincerely thank god for that it's not that this and that happened people receive this 
but when people say my life changed i listened to the message something happened i got to know the holy spirit i became a leader that's transformation this is why you see ministries like that of joyce mayer joel austin you may not see them do physical miracles and so because of that you may think that they are not doing anything until you see the systems that are intentionally transforming people some of them have tv stations in prisons some of them design the programs that the prisons use and so the endorsement of the government has made them a voice this is influence i've told you that the kingdom advances in two ways primarily number one is evangelism number two is influence the second was the woman at the well jesus comes to meet this woman at the well and her life was in shambles many husbands and then jesus began to speak with her when he was done speaking with her he didn't even ask her go and publicize she ran and said come see a man this is how people come to our churches listen they will not say don't you know apostle joshua selman they say come see a man when the people come and encounter you and your god then they will go back and say now we believe not because you told us we have seen for ourselves let people not be invited and come to your church and say where is the man the service is over what did you invite me for what was your proposition what did you say would happen to me you told me if i came i would hear the word of god you told me if i came the worship would lift me you told me if i came i would see excellence i'm here now the grace is about to be shared i didn't see any of those things now that person will go back and still publicize but against your impact you say make sure that any day you see this man please don't waste your time there's nothing happening there do not ignore the referrals and the endorsement of transformed men do not ignore it this is one of the ways that God by his spirit has built this ministry for himself transformed lives you cannot deny transformation you may say a miracle is fake a breakthrough is fake a prophetic word is fake this is just psychology but how do you explain a transformed life are we together i was blind now i see i was wrong now i'm right i was in darkness now i'm in the light i was poor now i'm blessed this is the kingdom alongside the results and the testimonies that they bring pay attention to your media ministry media ministry do not ignore it son of man what seest thou and he said a flying scroll he was seeing the power of technology a scroll that can fly it's a scroll that contains information but it's not limited to a localized environment it can fly to regions the media ministry is powerful look what the social media is doing that someone can actually sit down from one spot it's a system that has broken down it has manifested omnipresence that i can be here and yet i can be there zuckerberg is in his house but he's in your phone he's in your heart he's in your life he's in your mind he's in your decisions he forced himself into your values you cannot plan without him he didn't ask you he forced his way there you can institutionalize your impact such that any generation that ignores God through you will pay for it. Whoever ignored Jesus paid for it. Whoever ignored Elijah paid for it. Whoever ignored Moses paid for it. The media ministry is powerful. Brand your content to reflect your values. Brand your content to reflect your values. Very important. Media is powerful. There are many nations that I have not been to that today 
have been so marvelously blessed by what God is doing here. It is the power of the internet. It is the power of the media. It's very important. A disclaimer though, you must have strong spiritual and emotional strength to explore the tool of the media. Because you see, let me teach you something, dear men of God. An average man of God is already used to lavish celebration by the people within his circle. Nobody may have the right, whether they agree with you or not, they may not have the courage to confront you and say, I don't like you. Welcome to the world where the, there are audacious men and women. You can make one statement and your members are clapping and somebody comes and says for two weeks, let's analyze the nonsense this preacher has said. And someone will be saying, that's my man of God. He said, that may be your man of God, but that's my foolish man who I'm correcting. If you don't have the emotional stamina, listen to me. Because many Christians are strong spiritually, but we are weak emotionally. They said this about me and it destabilizes you. Then do not be global. It's a risk. You are not authorized to be global as a ministry and as a man of God if you do not have the fortitude to stand disagreement, to stand persecution. Do not fear being controversial, provided you have convictions. They talk about Jesus and they talk about Satan. No matter how far you go, it will be in between two of them. Your Jesus is the one someone can paint on facebook have you seen different kinds of caricatures of jesus your jesus that we go to jerusalem and roll on the floor for and the people are just watching this madman i thought they were here for tourism my jesus this is where you died this is your tomb they say this is not the real tomb they say this is the one that i <laughs> don't be offended when someone has no regard for your values men are just men this is a powerful advice I'm giving you. When I started out in ministry, let me tell you something. And, and Jimmy is here, he will testify. I'm not somebody that, I, I'm, a, I'm a man of peace. I honestly don't like trouble. So if it means me lying down here for peace to reign, I don't like controversy and I don't like trouble. And that time, I used to wear myself out. I would pray and just spend time with God at about one or two. When I now want to go and rest, someone will now call me and say, Apostle, then there was a place I used to meet in, in the campus there. Are you at so-so so place? I said, no, I want to go and sleep. And then they now blackmail me and say, didn't you say God sent you for us? I, I'm having pains. I want to see you and you are complaining. And I feel bad. I just go back and say, Lord, this is for your glory. <laughs> Let me tell you something about men. You will never satisfy their desires. You do not have that ability. The same thing that will put a crown on the head of another is what another person will advocate that you take off. If you do not sustain emotional intelligence, you will break down. Nobody wants to hear anything negative about himself. If, if I produce this, and you hold it and say, but this is dirty. You mean, Pastor Alpha, this is all you could do? As brilliant as you are? Whereas, while you are saying it, this person is on his knees collecting it. Many of you here, looking at me, you want fame. But without the cross that comes with fame, there is a huge cross. You think it's everybody that likes me? Are you joking? You think it's everybody that believes in me? Are you joking? You think it's everybody that respects me? Are you joking? Have you not seen people insult Papa Ia Deboe? Have you not seen people insult Kenneth Hagin? One time I stumbled across a video material that wrote down the name of almost every known man of God and just captioned it that they are all going to hell. I said, ah, these are the guys that have taught the whole body of Christ. So if they are all going to hell, let's find out quickly so that we can, because you can't dodge any of them. I mean, these guys just carried the body of Christ and said the church is going to hell. 
convictions do you have the stamina to be controversial because every great vision is first fought before it is honored it is the price for renaissance is the price for a revolution is the price for doing something different as the fathers when women began to preach in the church it was war when the power of god began to move i remember a man of god i went to minister in his church and he was telling me about his state he said those days if someone falls under the anointing they can almost go and lock you up he said when the power of god started moving in and through his ministry it was strange they said he was diabolic he was devilish and all of that how will you feel if someone came for your service and while everybody was kneeling down they were just looking at you like this say is this what you call a man of god this is what you call church shame on you and you go back and say god they said shame on me god will say go and find out what they said about me <laughs> Let, let's keep going how many of you precious sisters they see you walk around oh this lady no earrings oh this lady head tie all the time and you feel bad and you are standing because some persons who have their values don't want to keep their values and come to destroy your confidence bending to become like people will break you because you will have to bend to every direction and your body cannot bend to every direction somebody will say sing traditionals alone we are africans you will dance and somebody say no that dance is is a demonic dance you are doing traditional and you are dancing did you see the way that lady was no 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 the way that lady is dancing with the brothers their mind will not be focused on the cross now you go back to sing hymns and someone will, you know listen be guided by the fear of the lord by conscience and by posterity nothing more you live to please everybody you have trouble god made the work easy focus on him he's the only one who will mark the script everybody is a student the best student in a class will still be assessed so don't let the ignorance of people around just come and challenge you Are we blessed i just digressed a bit we're going to pray to teach you this let me tell you sincerely and i submit to you on easy lies the crown the the head that wears the crown it looks glorious when you see great people and great ministers sit on the throne but let me tell you as every man of god here if you say a conference is coming you can tell them sir i saw a vision it is done the bills are not there ultimately it's that man's faith that is going to stretch you come and say pastor just to reassure you the conference must happen except god didn't give me the revelation you had the revelation this is the man that is going to produce the finances by faith that's why you see depressed preachers everywhere sisters that's why many of you are afraid of marrying men of god when you weigh the trouble and weigh this you just say kai mm. <laughs> that's the price for glory my dear people living in a world where everybody loves you that world is a dream that world is a big dream do you have the stamina to be controversial and yet focused and yet determined there are times that i go to minister and i thank god for the honor sometimes right from the airport you know sometimes people have bands that play sometimes they have some dignitaries that they bring to welcome me and i just come down and i see people who don't know me and you just see the anger who is the guy this is him apostle so what i wish coin on here i mean you see the anger this guy i say what is it my fault what, did i stop you from rising i mean look at look you see how people are 
There are many times people talk about my coming in many regions. They hype it. Apostle is coming. Your life. I'm telling you, just come. I can discern I'm a spiritual man. As soon as I enter, people are jumping. Sometimes you can see through the crowd. What is this? What is this generation becoming? Just because a man entered? Jesus entered, you didn't clap. Now a man is, you know. And then I just laugh it over and I love them. When I come up to preach, usually sometimes they are standing, oh yeah, let's see what he's saying that is unusual. What has he said that Kenneth Higgins has not said? What has he said? Let's see. It. And many times, usually when I start talking, five, ten minutes, they start softening up a little. They just look at no, then later they do like they want to open the notebook. They open it a little. And then later on, they're like, ah, this, I mean, this is. <laughs> Pastor, when they persecute you, it's not unusual. It's not always because you are wrong. Sometimes it's because you are right. Your assignment is to help even your persecutors. So accommodate their ignorance while they change. That's what makes you a leader the ability to see the more superior version of themselves hmm. i'm blessed by my own teaching here already the last the last secret to sustainable impact is the availability of financial resources please write it down this is a minister's conference and i'm just hoping and praying that god truly added value this morning to someone's life finance please look up pastors you will bear me witness and every man of god here will tell you Whoever ignores the place of financial resources in kingdom advance will pay for it and pay for it again and again. You see, come, David. When you start out in ministry, you don't really need finances. Usually, you meet at one corner, under a tree, somewhere. All you are concerned about is the power of God falls on you. You teach. You don't need a mic. You don't need anything. So your focus will be on Jesus, your growth, and all of that. But now you get to a point where leadership, where administration, and other things begin to come in. The financial burden of ministry can strangle your prayer life. It can strangle your word life. It can even strangle your values. Everybody say finance. One of the questions that I ask the Lord sincerely from the depth of my heart. I learned this from Pat Robinson, the founder of CBN, 700 Club. He said when God called him to do ministry, he asked God three things. He said, Lord, please give me three things. Number one, wisdom. Number two, favor. Number three, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. If you will give me these three, I will go. When I heard it, I went back to God. I said, God, I don't know if I'm going to ask you. I've asked you before for your presence. And now, maybe let me ask first before I will find out later that I made a mistake. Please, talk to me about the finance of this vision that you are showing me. How is it going to come and where will it come from? You see the way ministers have been attacked everywhere? You call people to sow seeds. The next thing, someone is insulting you. They, that is not the system of the world. And of course, I know that here and there, people have exaggerated these things. Because there are bills to pay. I don't want to tell you the weekly budget that runs this ministry. It is not necessary. But just believe me when I tell you, you can run a conference with the weekly budget of this ministry and we're not even in our own place it's true the rentals the transportation the power and all the things
things that have to be put in place. And yet you are supposed to be focused and loving. That's why some men of God come up the stage. You see the anger. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Is it this? What part of amen can't you? Can't, and you know that this, this pain, the person is not bad. He's trying to say encourage me and you are refusing. The Holy Ghost can use money to create joy. You are pastors. Imagine that we came here right now and we told you there is no finance for tonight's meeting. The communion alone for tomorrow. If I tell you how much was spent on the communion just for tomorrow's miracle service, you will be surprised. You will ask yourself whether it's necessary or necessary. Must we take communion? Can't we just speak prophecy instead? Prophecy is cheaper. Just be blessed. I mean, what is there with communion? It will not cost you anything for starters less than 25 million naira per month to float a television station. How much? Per month. Not HD. That's the channels you switch. That you say, please, let's move to another channel. That's what they paid. Did you hear what I said? Those channels that you see a lot of haze. Is it black? Is it white? This is what they paid. Didn't Satan pay men to say Jesus is not Lord? As soon as he resurrected, they called some people and said, okay, come, let me tip you. Say Jesus is not Lord. We will settle the words on the top. And Satan is still using money today. If the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is not empowered in these end times, my brothers and my sisters, please listen to me. This is not about an addiction to money. This is money just like the anointing. Tools for kingdom advance. It is important. Some of our visitors, we just got news that because of, I think the convocation or so. I didn't even know there was convocation happening on, on Saturday. And now they just passed a directive that, you know, all our people there, they should evacuate them from the... Um, the, the hotels that belong, you know, that we lodge them there. Can you imagine that? Just like that. Get out. Out. We have visitors coming. You and your money, get out. Now, imagine if I come and whisper and say, Reverend Bandoma, Pastor Fred, please, we need 500,000 this night. Now, can you find a way? If I do it directly, it will pinch me. So, find a way. Money can help you have integrity. Oh. Let me tell you this. It's true. It's true. Financial resources are important. Provided they are kept within the jurisdiction of their relevance. They work wonders. We need heavy financial resources. The gospel is free. But the means to take it to the lost is very expensive. The vehicle that carries the gospel is heavy. Every church, thank you, and that includes businesses. Please listen. We're going to pray. Must have, I've stated this before, but number one, must have a strategy for income generation. Now, the Bible is very clear as to how financial resources should come into the church. The Bible allows for tithes, allows for offerings, and all kinds of givings and partnership. The Bible allows that. Provided the resources are used with integrity and truthfulness. But because of the peculiarity of our world today, if all you do is depend on tithes and offering, you will only run church services. You can't run projects. I've, I've, been, I've been to the churches of all my dear friends and I've seen the projects that they are doing. And many of you may not know, but... With all humility and to the glory of God, we acquired a property recently. And um, I may not tell you how much that is, but I can only give you an idea 
36 plots of land. Now listen. It was paid cash without raising any, even the leaders didn't even know. So that when we come to church, we can serve God in truth and in spirit. And not just to come and say, people, we are going to have to do this. I'm not saying it's wrong to challenge people. Don't trivialize it. Reverend Uban Doma shared here that there are people who have the grace for helps. Anybody that is a kingdom financier, your first assignment after knowing God is to be extremely wealthy. If you are not wealthy, you are wicked and you have failed. To supply for the resources and the blessings of heaven. I insist and I make sure that there's no financial pressure whatsoever on the workers and the leaders in this ministry. That everything that has to do with committing seeds is done by revelation and truthfulness. Don't be angry when you see pastors manipulating people. I don't endorse it. But sometimes it's an expression of the pain. They were mentored to trivialize finances. And so they pursued the things of God. Sincerely so. But now they found out that there is a level of financial capability you must have to excel. A Jimmy, during the business session, for those of you who were here, he ran us through a lot of demands minus luxury pastors will tell you here the amount of an average man of god just on dressing just not luxury just on dressing can build many houses are we together because a man of god cannot dress shabby and dress scattered is the same you that will say what is this this is not jesus when i started with the lord there was a year that god opened my eyes to the necessity of financing ministry i remember when i switched and i said believers it's me that has been teaching you on purpose and the power of God and intimacy with the Holy Spirit and the kingdom. Now, in addition to that curriculum, God has introduced finance. Whoa. Whoa. I, had, I got the blow of my life. Apostle has backsliding. Jesus is Lord. What happened? Apostle, leaving all of these things to come to mundane things like finances. Now, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not, don't hate anyone. Don't, don't. I'm like Joseph. Sometimes persecution is proof that you are really sent. You see the ignorance in the people. And you know if I don't manifest, they will remain like this. They are persecuting me is validating the fact that they are ignorant. I went to the Lord crying to him and said, God, what is all this? And the Lord told me, you can choose to listen to men. Or listen to me i'm showing you the future and i said lord show me your ways please let me not get to a point in ministry where i have to do what i shouldn't do because i'm looking for finance most members don't know that men of god have other things with their lives too who pays the school fees of that man of god's child How do you run the church? By the privilege of God's grace. There are so many of our children here that we take care of. It's not something to blow a trumpet about. Not school fees. They are upkeep. There are people whose daily living is in the pocket of another person. And that done effortlessly. I have seen and I tell you by the privilege of God's mercy. The advantage of financial resources. Maybe this is why some of you came for this conference. It may be a pastor conference, but you have done well in these other areas. But you may have been the victim of this skirmish communication by the gates of hell. That financial resources are not necessary. Change your mind. Please change your mind. The earlier, the better. So that you will not eat your children in the future. And so that you will not sell your children to pay debt. The prophet, although a prophet... 
he died and left his children and one woman in debt. By the time you pastor families that are not doing well, you will find out that it is in the efficiency of the people that you are also blessed. Hallelujah. When God showed me this, I was grateful when I found the keys. Listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. Full-time ministry in today's world does not mean the absence of activating streams of income. It means full-hearted commitment. Hear what I'm telling you. The 21st century church, you need to adjust your understanding of full-time ministry. Full-time ministry does not mean throw away every opportunity to lift you. It means let your heart be committed full-time. Because if you ignore everything, and say me i'm not i'm not a businessman i don't do anything let me tell you hunger will always drive israel to egypt it was hunger that drove israel to egypt like he's driving many of you right now you love god until now you are beginning to teach things that you know should not be if you must be outstanding in ministry Please, make it a point of duty by the grace of God to conquer this finance thing. The same way you press for the anointing. The same way you press for revelation. Don't dichotomize them. And don't let the devil make you feel one is carnal. And No, they are all spiritual. What is carnal about money? It takes the spirit for you to prosper. The same way you press for character, anointing, revelation, please add finance to the list as the tools together. The body of Jesus was hanging on the cross. I've taught you. No prayer warrior could bring that body down. It took resources to bring the body. Who was the owner of the grave that Jesus entered? He came out from it and saved you, but whose grave? Who donated his grave for prophecy to be fulfilled? Whose donkey did Jesus climb if he was broke and he did not have a donkey? There would be no triumphant entry. He was born in a manger. Whose manger? I will never pastor and lead the people who know God and don't know finances. They will know both. I believe in influence. I believe in the ease that kingdom understanding together with influence provides. Africa, do not mix Christianity and the depraved culture that our servitude, our pre and post colonial servitude has been interwoven with Christianity. We mix everything together and make doctrines out of them. Africa has largely been a territory of servitude. We have not understood leadership. We don't know influence. It's strange to our culture. And so in the dealings of God, we limit our understanding to submission, which is important, but we hate influence. And the principles that get us to the corridors of power, we hate and we fight. It's wonderful to fear God. It's wonderful to love God. But if you do not have an efficient leadership, you will not last there will not be a system of building. The reason why this building is built because, is because one block allowed another to stay on it. If the block refuses and says, that's not how I am, you will not have a structure. Leadership. Number three, strategy. You have to execute systemically to build according to patterns. Number four is your reach. From Jerusalem, from Judea, samaria to the ends of the earth he would have just said to the ends of the earth but he broke them in levels the way you sell jesus in jerusalem is not how you would do it in judea it's not how you would do it in in samaria for every one of these regions and levels there are strategies for your reach and finally finance you need finance it is one of the greatest tools do you know that in Europe today, pastor, 
Islam is the fastest growing religion in Europe. They've never had one city-wide crusade. One. One. You know what they do? Agree to be gay and agree to be a Muslim will pay you through school. And they go back and say, Daddy, this is what they said. You say, I won't pay your school fees and you will not be a Muslim. You say, I've gotten the answer. Sir, where is the place to sign the signature? To be gay? Fine. To be a Muslim? Fine. One of our dear ladies I remember many years ago. She got born again. Her brother was still a Muslim. The father was still a Muslim. Then the brother got born again. Then eventually the father got born again. When the father got born again, pastor, true story. The wealthy people stashed money at the back of a car and drove from Kogi to Lagos. They said, what is wrong? Sit down. What happened? Is it that you lost in business? What happened? Because they believe if you come to Jesus, it is because you are frustrated and you are welcome. But then they are saying, I mean, how have you reduced yourself to give your life to Christ? What happened? The day she told me, I said, my God. They snatched the car with money and opened it. Please deny Jesus and have money to get your life back. Hear me. If Michael Jackson ever said Jesus, even by mistake, he would have won more souls. I am Michael Jackson. I love Jesus on his shirt. You will write your name too. I am Sam. I love Even a wizard will say, I am a wizard. I need Jesus. That's the power of influence. Nobody asks you to wear what you wear. They made you wear it. They created a need and forced it. We can force a generation to see the relevance of Jesus. Not by poking it on people's eyes. But building correctly. The church must prosper. Please, pastors, hear me. Gone are the days where you tell people I'm a pastor and they pity you. They say, so, Pastor Alpha, this is it. You went and got a lecturing job in University of Joss. And now with all that God has done, this is how you want to waste your life. Whoever said ministry was a cause. Whoever said serving Jesus is what people do when they are failed in life and they don't know what else to do they say instead of wasting my life at least let me serve in the vineyard we must change that perception in the name of jesus the name of jesus is heavy it takes finance to lift it up we are mandated to lift it high we raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we sing in honor of you. We will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Nada o kaka sunanka ubangi chika isayabo. Please hold hands with someone by your left and by your right. Micah chapter 4, please. We are going to pray. There is coming a generation that will defy this. There has to be a generation that will represent Christ properly. Micah chapter 4. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain, the influence of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of other stratas and influences and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow to it. Next verse. Verse 2. And many nations, how many? Many nations shall come, say come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob 
and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for the Lord shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem you see let me tell you every great move of God starts like a joke the kingdom of God is likened to a living it's a parable a living looks small and harmless until it sees the what they call it the dough you just mix a little of it and stand back and watch the power of that tiny thing you added. I remember those days when my mother would be making cake or something. I used to wonder that small thing. Just throw the thing there and just mix it and it begins to rise. That's what is happening. Something you are receiving. We are making noise and people are these are noise makers. They are just broke people consoling themselves. Uh-uh. The Lord himself is the captain of this army. God has gathered us from several places to tell you that whether or not in the fivefold ministry like Reverend Ubandoma shared or whatever dimension of kingdom service you must insist that Lord through you, my generation will know that Jesus is Lord. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. hallelujah hallelujah i wish the minister's conference were to run for days i would have taught you a lot of things one of them is the ministry of men you are not free until men come into your life. Please listen. We are going to pray. If you have money, you are not yet favored. You know you are favored when you have access to the hearts of men. True favor is not just money. True favor is men. And all that they have. I can give you money. Doesn't mean I love you. But when I give you my heart, with my heart is everything connected to me. Listen, let me tell you this. I remember the first major financial miracle that God brought to this ministry. Till tomorrow, I don't know the person. It was like a joke. Because when they make transfers to the ministry, I get the alerts. And I saw an alert that almost brought me to my knees. I said, God, what is this? Who is this person? And they didn't even text to say, okay, I'm the one. I said they should try to see if they can get me the person, and they couldn't. And I just said, this is it. Men. If you do not have men that lift your hands, you are going to fall in ministry. You may be Moses, but your hands will be tired. And you will need the hands that hold you. Financially, spiritually, giving you encouragement and love. You can't imagine how blessed I am hearing that pastor left Gombe. Gombe is very far. Zamfara, far. Reverend Ubanduma was here with his family. He's here again. One of my friends called me and said he's coming. And you know, this is not a standard conference. We didn't send any letter of invitation. I spotted different ministers here and there. Father, the mighty man that will hold my hands as I lift up your name. I draw them in this season. Lift your voice and pray. Favor with men. Favor with men. Favor with men. Favor with men, oh God. 
Open the doors of favor with men. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points and we're done. When Jesus came to the fig tree, he expected to find fruit. He came because he was hungry. Not finding fruit, he cursed it. If he found fruit, he would have blessed it. If your life and your ministry does not produce extraordinary results, your life will be full of bitterness and hatred and anger and competition. This is what you see happening around the body of Christ. This one hating this one, this one fighting this one, this one getting angry. There is no need. When God invests a dimension of strange results in your life and ministry, by the teaching of truth and by the mighty works that come from your hands, you will be surprised to see the way the nations will flow. They will inconvenience themselves to honor Christ in your life. Father, give me results. Real results. Results of salvation. Results of transformation. Results of miracles, signs, wonders. Breakthroughs is someone praying. And evidence is the end of all argument. A genuine result is the end of all argument. You are in business, cry. Give me results in business. Give my organization results. Consistent results. Please pray. Give me results. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John the prophet is in the prison and he sends his disciples to question the messiahship of Jesus. He says, go and ask him, are you the messiah or should we expect another? Jesus does not answer. He turns back and begins to heal the sick and cast out devils. He said, go and tell John what you have seen. Go and tell him what are the signs of the messiah. Ask John. You need real results in your life. You heard the testimony of our precious mommy. You see that? That you just sit in a car and something, a challenge of many years just goes. Everybody is a giver. There is a level of results that will make them give. Please listen. Let me tell you this. The same person who will say, I will not give you five naira. Is the same person who will carry money and say, sir, the privilege of having this. Everybody who gives to you has relatives in need. That they say, don't disturb me again. And they will come. There is a level of impact that will make any seed look like a favor to you. You need to trust God. Results empower you yourself. There are companies today and there are businesses today that take a sizable portion of their profits. And I'm not talking of small startups. And transfer to this ministry consistently because of something that happened. 
I don't say this to brag. It's because we're in a pastor's conference. I am a non-executive board member in certain companies. I never sat down in any board meeting. I don't even know them. They believe I represent the ark of God to their business. And they are there. And I just see alerts in my phone. Where is this coming from? Don't trivialize results. Results can make your life easy. We are going to pray it again. Please don't be tired. Our time is gone, but we are men of God. Listen, Lord, I have seen certain dimensions of results, but multiply the results upon my life. Beyond argument, please pray. Beyond contention. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. John chapter 1 and verse 6. Never forget this scripture for as long as you live. There is a goal, there is an object behind everything that we do, that we call ministry. Whether it is the fivefold ministry or your business as a ministry, ministry is any channel that can lead to souls saved, lives transformed, and Jesus glorified. If giving birth can do that, it is ministry. If singing can do that, it is ministry. He says there was a man sent from God. His name was John 7. The same, the Bible says, came for a witness. Say witness. To bear witness of the light that men through him, his witness, his testimony, his results might believe. That's it. When all is said and done, dear people of God, this is all we are driving at. That through my life, through the hand of God upon my life, through my business, through the ministry, through family, through everything that Jesus be glorified. You're going to turn this to a prayer and say, Father, use everything. Use my results. Use my life. Use my teachings. Use my business. Use my publicity. Even for your glory. Someone pray. For your glory. Use the wealth that you give me. Use the influence that you give me. The power of the Holy Spirit. Access to the hearts of kings. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll just speak over your life now. We we'll allow the impartation for the miracle service. Our time is gone. We want to just release everyone to go and rest. Tonight we have a session and then we are breaking the fast tomorrow by one. And after that we return for the miracle service and an impartation. But I will pray over all that we're involved with. But then the impartation, I know that many of you have come to receive. Look, let me tell you this. Truly speaking, a man can receive nothing except it is given. If God does not give you, you cannot have it. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. I want to pray. And the elders of the Jews build it. And they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And they built it and finished it. It's one thing to desire to build. 
But the Bible says they prospered and they finished. While they were building, there was prophecy that was ensuring that the building prospers and that it finishes. It matters the voice and the voices that speak over your life and over your ministry. Jesus was under a closed heaven for 30 years until a voice opened his heavens. Jesus, the word, was under a closed heaven. When he met with John, John said, mm -mm, I desire, I mean, this is what you have is what I desire. I'm not worthy to untie the latchet of your shoe. Jesus said, suffer it to be so. It's an ordinance. No man can open, as it were, in this regard, his own heavens. It will take a voice. God kept watching but never spoke from heaven. When he submitted to the prophetic ministry of John, his heavens were opened and a voice spoke. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Listen, pastors, a voice has to tell creation to hear you. Hear ye that church. Hear ye that business. Hear ye that radio program. Hear ye that TV program. Otherwise, you will go up the mountain, nobody will come. You will go up the valley, nobody will come. You will stand by the rivers of Gennesaret and nobody will come. Because a voice never said they hear you. Please bring him up. Lord, let the prophetic teaching anointing come upon him. Make him a mighty man. Put a hunger and a desire in his heart for your word. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Outside, there is somebody I want to speak to. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord outside towards the extreme back. The power of God is going to come upon one person there mightily. Please let the ushers bring the person. I need to speak to the person. Outside, towards the back, towards the end part. The power of God will come mightily and strong upon one person there. For I will make you like Deborah, said the Spirit of God. I will make you a mighty warrior, said the Spirit of God. Today I lift away from your life the distractions. Distractions. The Lord is taking away distractions from your life. Distractions. Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. So let us therefore lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and run with perseverance the race hallelujah stand behind her i'm seeing the power of god coming on her i don't know what it is for but the anointing of the spirit is coming strong upon her there is something god is taking out of her family no the usher not even the lady you usher god is taking away something out of your life Hallelujah. Emmanuel, come.
bring him out. The Lord is lifting darkness from your family. The Lord is lifting darkness from your family. Darkness from your family. It must roll away now. It's lifting darkness from your family. Amaka and Adora, come. Come quickly, quickly. The Spirit of the Lord says, I should tell you the feast of new things. The feast of new things. Hold hands together. The feast of new things. The feast of new things. The feast of new things. Ah, he will wipe away that which is of the old. And he will bring you into the new. The Lord says, I should tell you the feast of new things. I am doing a feast of new things. Bringing into your life a feast of new things. A feast of new things. The anointing of the Spirit will make this happen. Let it flow to you right now. And change you. Change you. Change you. Change you. Your father is a police officer. Your dad is a police officer. Your dad is a police officer. Your dad is a police officer. Please, where is the person? In Zaria here, not outside of Zaria. A police officer in Zaria here. the Lord with all your heart and the Lord will use you but there are many things that need to be pruned there are distractions in your life distractions your name is Emmanuel and it means God is with you there are distractions little things sway you your life is too emotional to walk with God. You need stability. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I impart upon you strength in your spirit, man. Strength. Take it now. The strength of the spirit. It will come upon you strongly. I've laid hands on you. You will never be able to be weak and dwindle around again. And come upon you. Nesitila, come quickly. There are weights that must be broken. The Spirit of God says, Weights, weights, they must be broken. Weights, they must be broken. Cares and weights and worries. Cast your cares before the Lord because the Lord wants to do great things in your life, but there are weights. Wait, wait. There are weights. Oh God, may those weights give way right now. In the name of Jesus. Ken, an angel is standing close to you. And I'm seeing oil being poured upon you. And the Lord is saying, Again, I will visit your family. Again, I will visit your family. Again, I will visit your family. 
Lord, let that oil be poured upon him for his family. The Lord is saying, again, I will visit your family. Again, I will visit your family. That's what the Lord is saying. Again, I will visit your family. And this time around, it will be with power. Again, I will visit your family. My dear, may the Lord anoint you. It's an anointing that is coming upon you. May the Lord anoint you. You are weak in the spirit. I strengthen you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lord, you took my pain away. Then you give me joy You're my peace, my melody In the center of the storm You gave me a brand new song To sing to you That's why I will lift up my voice And say, yeah, 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 yeah The Lord is giving you beautiful ashes Beauty for ashes, beauty for ashes, and a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Beauty for ashes. There is a woman that came here with a sick child. There is a woman that came here with a sick child. What's wrong with him? Help her with the mic. No mic. What's wrong with him? Huh? SS. SS. This is not the situation. I'll pray for him, but in fact, this this is a baby. It's not even somebody as old as this. This is somebody within the age range of maybe a small child that is sick. I don't know if it's inside or outside. The Lord wants to heal that person. Go dear. Go dear. Go dear. Come, your breakthrough has come. Yeah, yeah. Where are you coming from? Samaru. You believe Jesus will touch you right now? You believe that? Do you love Jesus? I love Jesus. And other things. You know what I'm talking about, right? Listen, you have to give God everything. Everything. I'm not talking of born again. Everything. Total surrender. Are you getting what I'm saying? There's no one leg in, one leg out. It has to be completely all for him. Hold my hands and let me pray for you. You all good, yeah? I'll pray for you. Will you let her go now in the name of Jesus? I see you in the spirit. You will let her go now. I'm speaking to this other lady. Don't worry, she may not be looking at me. I'm not talking to her. Release her family right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I cause darkness. I cause darkness over the family. I set you free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. From every power that is not of God. Madam. I'll, there will be a prayer session and I'll pray for your son. But let me just lay hands on him since you came out.
Someone had a dream this morning. You saw me laying hands on you just this morning. Early this morning. I know people have this kind of dream, but someone specifically had that dream this morning. Father, heal this boy in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, look at me. You love Jesus with all your heart. Very much. He will do mighty things through your life. Just be patient. Huh? Now is not the time of manifestation. Now is the time of building. But it is true that he will do mighty things through your life. Hold my hands. Father, do to her what she saw in the dream. In the name of Jesus. Do something to your spirit. It's an awakening that is happening to you. It's an awakening. I break the chains of limitation over you now. I cast those chains. I set them on fire. In the name that is above all names. May those chains be broken. And I separate you from error. There is a spirit of error that can come with zeal when it is misdirected. I separate you from error. You will be circumspect and you will only be accurate. In the name of Jesus. Where is Isaac in Oshrin? Is he around? It's time for you to step into a new level. The Lord is removing something. I'm seeing like a surgery being done on you. There is something that so badly keeps you from rising to the next level. And the Lord says, it's time I prune it. It's a desire, it's an appetite that he's killing because it does not come from him. He wants to do mighty things. Hold my hands. Kill that appetite, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let that live. Everything that does not name the name of Christ, may it live come this gentleman you it's time to respond to the dream you had come these are wicked forces of darkness tying your life and your destiny down with delay father in the name of Jesus Christ I set you free by the power of God that demonic dream and the experience that had that you had there, let it never return again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever gives them legal access to your life is sealed and broken by the blood. In the name of Jesus Christ. The last person and then will just come, my dear. This lady. No, yes, come. You now, yes. Let no man despise you, for out of you will come a treasure. Let no one despise you. Let no one despise you, for out of you will come a treasure. The Lord says, I should tell you, there is this treasure that is hidden in earthen vessels, that the excellency and power may be of God and not of men. Come, hold my hands. There is a fragrance that is coming upon your life from today. That will make you uncommon. Uncommon. Distinguished. For you love the Lord with your whole heart. You love the Lord with your whole heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, everything that makes men despise, I curse it. I curse it. chapter 3 turn to your neighbor and say are you still here
I just want to charge us a bit. Welcome everybody, all those who came from far and near. Honor you. Glad to have you here. You will never be the same. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from birth, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seen Peter and John, follow me closely, about to go into the temple, asked an arm. And Peter, fasten, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And this is the key verse, verse 5. Let's read together. One to read. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something expecting to receive something when he said look on us they paid attention because they were expecting that they were going to receive something as i began to pray and say lord what would i share with your people the lord said the only thing i need from them is expectation 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 is a proof of faith expectation is a proof that you trust god hallelujah if you if you tell me you are hungry and I dip my hands in my pocket, automatically you begin to have a sign of expectation because you anticipate that I'm bringing out something. Is that true? And so you begin to position yourself to receive and say thank you. The only thing God is asking from you tonight is that you be expectant. Expect that sickness to leave your body. Expect that family captivity to come to an end expect the lord to visit you expect to step into new levels of the anointing expect that no matter what the challenge is the power of god can step into your life it does not take time it only takes the spirit of god for where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty where the spirit of the lord is not there is no liberty i want you to know that the spirit of god is in this place tonight and the only message the Lord asked me to communicate to you is that your heart be expectant. Expectant. Lord, I expect to be healed. I expect that you will wipe my tears. I expect that this situation in my life will change at once. I expect it. I expect it. Do you believe? Do you expect that God will do something in your life? God is already visiting people. You do not imagine the degree of spiritual preparation that goes in to all of our meetings. Talk less of the miracle service. So I want you to know that there is enough grace. There is enough anointing. Hallelujah. Right away we'll begin to pray and I'll just be moving in the anointing and God will minister to us. Please and please let your heart be expectant. That's the only message the Lord asked me to give us tonight. Expectation. Expectation. Expect that that which you wrote in your prayer request will be answered. Expect that that which you came down. See, don't look at the situation. Just be expectant. Be expectant. The greatest enemy to expectation is your past. Your history. Your track record of failure. Your track record of the seeming shortcomings of God. So every time you expect, you say, but I prayed before. But I fasted before. It says forgetting the things that are behind. Forgetting what happened yesterday or what did not happen yesterday. I press. Everyone say I press. I press. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. Just for two to five minutes. That's the only message the Lord asked me to bring to us tonight. Expectation. Let there be a, a depth of expectation in your heart. Lift your voice and cry to God and say, Lord, I am expectant. Pray. Lord, as your power moves, 
and as your spirit is touching men I am expectant I came with a hunger I came for a touch I came for an encounter I came with an expectation. Hallelujah. 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 Before we pray, come, Pastor Femi. The Lord says, I should tell you, he's opening you up to a season of wisdom. 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 He's opening you up to strange wisdom. Wisdom. That's what you are receiving. Wisdom. Strong wisdom. He's opening you up to a season of wisdom. That's what you need for the next level of your life. Wisdom. Tremendous wisdom. The wisdom of the spirit. The wisdom of the spirit. The wisdom of the spirit. He's giving you wisdom. He's giving you wisdom. He's giving you wisdom. Lord, I pray that you activate fountains of wisdom in him. Strange order of wisdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Wisdom in your decisions. Dimensions of wisdom that you have never seen before. You will make decisions that will accelerate your life. Accelerate ministry. hallelujah in one minute mention everything you came with as a challenge and say lord the time has come for your grace and your power Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom, you're welcome in this place, Shalom, Shalom, my father, Shalom, Shalom, you're welcome in this place. Shalom, shalom. Jehovah, shalom. Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom. Jehovah, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. shalom, shalom. Jehovah, shalom. Shalom, shalom. You're welcome in this place. One more time. Shalom, yeah. Everyone, 
Branda Soto Balanabash. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. We're starting tonight with individuals that God is giving them breakthroughs. Every single one of those individuals will come under the anointing of the Spirit. At the count of three. Just those individuals. One, two, three. Now, now, take it. Take it. Take it. Take it now. That breaker anointing. I release it right now. Right now, right now, right now. All the ones separated for breakthroughs right now. Inside and outside. I release that breakthrough anointing. That breakthrough anointing right now. That breakthrough anointing right now. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. It comes like a mighty rushing wind. The breakthrough anointing. The breakthrough unction. Enough of that level. Enough of that dimension. I speak it. I declare it. I prophesy it. And I release it. Take it from your belly. Out of your belly. Let it gush like living waters. Out of your belly. That breaker anointing. In the name of Jesus. Out of your belly. That breaker anointing. Breakthroughs. 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 I end the struggle. I end the struggle. I end the struggle. By the breakthrough anointing. I end the struggle right now. I end the struggle right now. All over the building. I end the struggle right now. Shaka ba 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 ba. Shaka ta ba 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 ba. Shaka ta ka ta. Embro ka se ke te. Ele ke te bo soto ba. Para ta ri ke te bo lo se ke te. Se ke te ke te re ke te bo. Embro ka ta na ka ti le bo sha. Se ke te le ko to shia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone lay your hands on your stomach. Just lay your hands on your stomach. Hallelujah. Lay your hands on your stomach. He said for out of your belly. Something will happen to some people right now. Out of your belly. Just keep your hands there. Father in the name of Jesus. Where are the ones you are separating? Spiritual breakthroughs. Right now. Right now. And right now from your belly from your belly from your belly from your belly in the name of Jesus out of your belly let it flow let it flow living waters living waters living waters new dimensions living waters skatata kapata reketetekete bekata taboskata from your innermost being from your innermost being from your innermost being from your innermost being a busting thought of new wine a busting thought of new wine a busting thought of new wine a busting thought Hallelujah. 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 Sabarada balada bakadia. There are people here right now. Listen. You came here because you are confused. There is no direction. You are trusting God for direction. You have prayed but there is nothing to do. You need direction desperately. Lift your hands. Lord, I pray wherever they are right now, by the light of the Spirit, my Father locates them. Receive direction right now. 
receive direction right now marital direction academic direction receive direction receive direction I put it in your spirit by the light of God I put it in your spirit by the light of God I put it in your spirit by the light of God by the light of God by the illumination of the spirit direction you will hear that voice you will hear that voice you will hear that voice saying this is the way you will hear that voice saying this is the strategy you will hear that voice hallelujah hallelujah lift your hands the Lord wants to destroy marital delay this is what is happening right now marital just keep your hands just do what I'm telling you to do hallelujah now hear me there are people here who God wants to release them into their marital destiny but there are horns and powers that has kept them down you may think it's finances or you may think it's this and that but the enemy has done this lift your hands father in the name of Jesus I release you right now I release you I release your family I release your sisters that power that has held your marital destiny hear the voice of the Lord that power that has stopped marriage in your family I speak in the name of Jesus be loose right now 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 hallelujah now lift your hands I'm seeing in the spirit a tree without fruit and so I know the Lord wants me to destroy barrenness 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 there is someone who came here with that situation I don't know if it's a couple or somebody you are expecting a miracle desperately let me have that one person come out. I'm going to pray for everybody right now, but we need to break that yoke right now. We need to break that yoke right now. There are families tied down. There are families tied down. When you identify that person, the person can come out. Lift your hands, let me pray. No, the Lord wants the family to come out first. Come out first. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Where are you coming from, sir? Kaduna. Kaduna. Yes, sir. Where's your wife? She left my house October 26th. We don't have the courage and she packed her things and she left. We were married for eight years, no child. You've been married for eight years no child. with no child. And so because of the frustration, she left. Do you know where she is? She's in Kaduna in her mother's house. Why did she leave? Look at how the devil steps in to destroy families. Eight years and is living because there is no child. But are you still in touch? Well, the church tried to call her. She didn't answer. So I left her alone. I was just praying that God should just intervene. So a friend of mine invited me from Kaduna to come to this program. Where is the friend? Friend, come. I need to pray for you. May God bless you. Let's celebrate the friend. Hallelujah. These are the kind of useful and relevant friends that God should bring in your life. Friend, where are you? May God bless you. 
a good friend for inviting him to come and receive breakthrough. Ogasa. Do you believe your wife will come back? Yes, sir. You want her back? Yes. Sir. I'm going to pray for you. Your wife will return back. Amen. Forget about what has happened. God will give you two boys, two girls. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you, sir. You are a good man and you love God. Not only that, what do you do? I work in an electronics company, Samsung. So when we had this issue of this marriage, they have to let go of me, but I have my own personal business in Kaduna, which I, know. I God established. Is helping you. Yes, this marriage has destroyed too many things in your life. You've lost money. You've lost a lot of people. Even cars. Because, because I'm seeing somebody that really used to be blessed. But it's like things are going down. The Lord is going to restore you. Do you believe that? You believe that? Yes, sir. Therefore, what God has joined. The Bible says, let no man put asunder. You need to be delivered. Right? There is a spirit that is making these things happen. You are a good man. You will be delivered right now. I curse that spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. I release your destiny right now. In the name of Jesus. I call forth your wife into your life. And I open the fountains of fruitfulness the Lord showed me two boys two girls and I released them to your life this power that has tied you down and tied your family in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare that it is released right now in the name of Jesus I'm holding your hands and with these hands may your business jack up beyond that which you have ever known and I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will restore your fortune and he will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Friend, come. Where are you from? Kaduna too? Ka Zaria. Yeah. Zaria, here. Yeah. You came alone? Yes. No, I came with a friend. What would you want the Lord to do in your life? Marital breakthrough. Marital breakthrough? Yes. What does that mean? Marriage or health in your marriage? Marriage. 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 When? This year. You believe it? Yes. Or you're just saying it? You have already spoken the word and it's happening. Let me pray for you. Father, you anointed us to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To appoint unto them. And in the name of Jesus, I declare that before this year runs out, your husband comes to you and may you be happily married. You will marry a godly man. May you marry a blessed man, one who will love you and fear the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you, sir. Now lift your hands and let me pray. I'm praying for barrenness. I don't care what represents barrenness in any area of your life. Lift your hands. Barrenness can mean unfruitfulness in any aspect. He says, Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army, but he was leprous. It was an area of barrenness. Barrenness is that aspect of your life that is not productive. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you right now. Lift your hands. Father, there are people who like a vine have refused to bear fruit in different areas. Others want to bear fruit. But the enemy has stopped it. I pray for you right now. Every power that is sitting on your fruitfulness. Where are those people who barrenness have held their lives? Where are those people? In the name of Jesus, let fire come upon you now. Let fire come upon you now. I destroy the hold of barrenness. Everywhere in this building, 
I break the chains of barrenness. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This row, can you lift your hands? Just this row. Just this row. Just keep your hands lifted. I see a wind blowing through this row. Barrenness be destroyed from the back to the front. Back to the front. Back to the front. There is no hiding. Back to the front. There are many people in this row. I break it right now. I break it right now. Right now to the back. From the back to the front. 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 To the front. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone under any influence of unfruitfulness. Right to the back. In the name of Jesus. Be set free. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. I want to minister deliverance to the oppressed. This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. When the spiritual limitation is taken away, then your life will move forward. What will happen tonight is not just for you, but for every family you represent. So there are people who will come under the influence of the anointing to be delivered. Not just for themselves, but for their families and the families you represent. Lift your hands. Father, in the name that is above all names, I'm praying. There are spirits sitting on families and the destinies of people. Appearing to people in dreams and visions and corrupting your purposes for their lives and lord it's time for them to go because this is mount zion now therefore i speak to every foul spirit every devil of darkness every yoke every territorial power that sits across territories i speak in the name of jesus by the authority of the Lord Jesus and I come under an apostolic anointing I bring every spirit under arrest and I command that you will live at the count of three now at the count of three I want you to shout the name Jesus and they must leave you one two three second spirit husband every territorial power ancestral spirits that tie people and families come out now come out now come out now come out of God's people in the name of Jesus bring them out in the name of Jesus I cost those powers I cost those powers I cost those powers I cost those powers hallelujah lift your hands lift your hands I see spirits that come to people in night visions and dreams make intercourse with them and destroy their lives Keep those hands lifted. Lord, where are those people? Let the sword of judgment find them now. Let the sword of judgment find them Hallelujah. 
Sisters, lift your hands. A spirit will prefer to oppress a sister than a brother. Because with one sister, there are many people that can become victims. Not because of immorality or anything. It's just the nature, the compelling character of women. I pray right now. Anyone here, whether you know it or not, that is under the influence of any spirit that is not of God. I pray and stretch my hands right now. In the name of Jesus, let fire they, they come upon that spirit. Let fire come upon that spirit. Come upon that spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is speaking to me that there are people here that start things but never finish. There are families that start things. You've been building a house for 10 years and will never complete it. Lift your hands. The finisher's anointing is going to come upon a few people right now. That grace to start and finish at the count of three is coming upon you for your destiny. Coming upon you for your family. Receive it right now. One, two, three. The finisher's anointing breaking the course of delay. The finisher's anointing breaking the yoke of delay. Projects that have refused to finish. Projects that have refused to finish. Hallelujah. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. Hallelujah. Now, for all those who came with sick people, you can march to the front now for prayer. Inside and outside. It's time to pray for the sick. Instrumentalists give us very anointed tunes. Worship team help us. While that is happening, if you've not written your prayer request, do that quickly. And in case you think you need to add something to it, please don't stop playing. While you're seated here, the power of God is visiting you. So be in the spirit, inside and outside, no matter how far you are, connect in the spirit. You can call your loved ones to quickly send in their requests. There is a God that answers prayer. Please make way for those who are coming out. Jesus is a healer. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Hallelujah. Now all of you who have come out 
I want you to wave goodbye to your infirmities and mean business with it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to believe that Jesus still heals and he will heal you right now. Hallelujah. We'll be very fast about it. Yep. Just give her a chair. Hallelujah. All of you standing here believe that Jesus will heal you right now. He will give us a sign. And the sign will be from one of you. Something will happen to one of you right now. And that will give us the sign of the stirring of the waters. power of God will come strongly upon one of you right now when that happens then it will allow us to pray for the sick right now thank you Jesus father let there be miracles I see miracles everywhere be discerning be spiritual Miracles everywhere. I see miracles everywhere. Right now, right now, miracles everywhere. I see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Right now, right now, right now. miracles everywhere.
my sweet miracle everywhere signs and wonders See, these are some of the things that you, when you know something is demonic, you don't add it with another. The devil will never heal you. It will backfire. Yes, sir. You understand? Yes, sir. Thank God for Jesus. Yes. He loves God. He loves God. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Selena, this is where we need sir. Talk to him. Tell him Jesus will heal you. Tell him what she needs it. can't work well. Eh? Hold on. Don't worry. Ogasa, talk to him. You'll be interpreting him. Eh? Tell him in the name of Jesus. He will work well now. And that witchcraft attack will leave. Ask him if he believes. Tell him to go. What's this? The medical report. Father, this is why you anointed us. Every power that is not of God, I set you free from it right now. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, you will walk normally by yourself. I release upon you the power that comes in the name of the Lord Jesus. For those of you who have never seen a miracle, watch closely what happens now. Hallelujah. I feel the healing anointing coming upon him. Stomach bloated. Jesus sets you free. I come in the name of the Lord. Tell him to hold my hands. Tell him to hold my hands. Release him. Release him. Walk. Come. Come. Tell him to come. Surprise! 
What just happened to him? Yes, 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 sir. Yes. Let me tell you something. It's not only settled. I pray for you. Yes, sir. That not only this will happen, but God will use you to do this. Amen. Same thing. Receive that anointing right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Baba, tell him from today. No witchcraft power. No charm. Will paralyze and keep him again. Appreciate God. Go back to your seat. God bless you. Oh, oh, oh.
is to help you stretch your fingers. Yes, they can't, they are not working. For eight months. Your hand. Yes, sir. For how long? Eight months. Why? It just started uh, after I started playing the guitar. You started playing the guitar. And playing guitar. Playing. Yes, sir. See strips, things. He has been playing guitar for as long. His fingers are as fresh as that of a baby. This thing is not because of guitar. This is witchcraft. The devil does not want you to play onto the glory of God. Oh, you, you want play, to play for a club now, this hand will be healed. The devil is a liar. Amen. Hallelujah. That's how he keeps Please, robbing sir. the church of potential people who worship God. Praise the Lord. You believe Jesus will heal you? All this. Look at me. I'm going to pray for you and the power of God will come upon you. You believe that? And then you move your whole hand and begin to try it. Say after me, Jesus. I believe. I believe. You're the son of the living God. You're the son of the living God. Right now. Right now. Life to my hands. Life to my hands. Say it again. Life to my hands. Life to my hands. Look at what is happening to his hands. He cannot move them. Go ahead and begin to move it. Go ahead. Begin to move it. Move it by yourself. Go ahead. Move it. Move it. Start moving your fingers. Look at this. He couldn't move his fingers. Look at this. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do what I'm doing. Hold it like this. Go ahead. Keep moving. Come on. Give Jesus praise. Couldn't use this at all. Couldn't even move. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that these hands become perfected. Can you see how the hands are? I mean, so stunned. You cannot even use it. Keep doing it. Keep shaking it. The power has gone and your hand recovers completely. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Give Jesus praise.
If we run to Him, He will run to us. If we lift our hands, He will lift us up. In a Oh, you say oh, of God. Of God. Can we say it again? If we call to him, he will run to us. If we run to him, he will run to us. If we will lift our hands, he will lift, lift our hands. Come now, pray. Oh, praise his name. Oh, you say so, God. Hey. Oh, sing for joy to God. Oh, sing for oh, joy. Sing for joy to God. I say, oh, sing for oh, joy. Sing for joy to God. I say, oh, sing for oh, joy. Sing for joy to God. I say, oh, If we call to him, he will answer us. If we run to him, he will run to us. If we lift our hands, he will lift us up. Come now, praise his name, oh, you say it's our God. One time. If we call to him, he will run to us. If we run to him, he will run to us. If we lift our hands, he will lift us up. Oh, sing, oh, sing, God, oh, to God. All the way, all the way, we go to hell. Hail your name, day by day. All the way, all the way, we go to hell. What the Lord has done, He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given us victory. That's why we say, Oh, say, yeah. Have you heard what the Lord has done? He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given us the victory. That's why we sing, Oh, say, yeah. I say yeah, yeah. I say yeah. Win, oh, Baba. I say yeah. I say yeah. yeah. I say 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 Higher, 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 oh, oh. Higher, 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 
Jesus higher. submit your prayer request. We are going to give God a hot hot praise as we pray on this. Three to five minutes of hot praise. Dance out every nonsense out of your life. This name was Watch it team, are you ready? This name I like that guy. Mind. That's ah, no, no. This name is Duma. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Steve. This name is Duma. Give a lot of dance and a shout of praise. The Lord a dance at the shop. Am I bummy rubber bar for bow go dare?
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands here and begin to just pray in the spirit. Unto you that answers prayer will all flesh come, O God. We have come before the mighty one. I'd like you to pray. There is nothing that our God cannot do. There is nothing he cannot do. says unto you that answers prayers will all flesh come father this request represent the cries of your people this request represent the desires of your people this request represent the challenges of your people this request represents the obstacles that are standing on our path to destiny these requests threaten the advancement of your kingdom in our lives we pray in the name that is above all names that every request here be turned into a testimony in the name of the lord jesus christ no matter how impossible the situation is oh god i pray that one by one, one by one, they will come and testify of your goodness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Already for some, I heard that Victor's wife that we prayed for has been rushed to the hospital. Labor has started for her. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is a very prophetic moment. Please, everybody inside and outside, don't let anyone distract you now. Lift your hands as we speak. Hallelujah. I love this part of the meeting because this is where everybody gets to be blessed. The power of prophecy and its ability to enter your life and change things. Please, I want you to believe. 
please i want you to believe no matter how far you are inside and outside i want you to believe hallelujah everything that represents limitation in your life everything that has stood as a limitation against your life and your destiny i come in the name of the lord god the lord god almighty and i declare that in this month of may may that limitation be lifted up your life may that limitation be lifted up your life in the name of jesus christ I pray for you. Whatever has stopped the helpers of your destiny from locating where you are, whatever wrong advice, whatever wrong impression has been given to them about you and your family that has made them refuse to come to your aid. Makata katakata, seketeketepaka, emproto seketelekata, mankratos kataba latapa, rebeketeketeketepeledebos. I call them into your life now in the name of Jesus Christ. I call the helpers of your destiny into your life now. I call the helpers of your destiny into your life now. I call the helpers of your destiny into your life now. hallelujah I pray for you this is the season where wisdom will be required for you to move to the next level listen the Bible says through wisdom a house is built and by understanding it is established through knowledge are the rooms filled with every treasurable thing wisdom for many of us is the key to the next level and this is not human wisdom it's not wisdom by scientific calculation strategies that are revealed of the spirit strategies that can take you in one day to realms that years have not brought you i pray the wisdom of the spirit may it come upon you now in the name of jesus christ the wisdom for the next dimension the wisdom for the next dimension the wisdom for the next dimension receive it in the name of Jesus hallelujah one of the keys to a life of stagnation is confusion lack of direction there's nothing as terrible as a man who is clueless about what to do it can be frustrating when you are clueless you are at the middle of an ocean and you don't know what to do but there is the spirit of counsel and mind the, the dimension of the operation of the spirit that comes and speaks peace to you in the name that is above all names i pray for you that every decision you need to make every direction that you need to take for this second half of your life to truly be the year of the rain i release upon you that dimension of the spirit of counsel and might marital direction financial direction academic direction career direction no more confusion no more confusion no more confusion hallelujah i pray for you part of the keys to stepping into the blessings of the lord is the ability for your eyes to see opportunities hagar listen hagar was in a place it was a desert but there was water her eyes could not see it. but when the angel of the lord appeared unto her 
suddenly she saw water i pray you have been passing water and bless you and you have not been seeing it in this month of may the anointing that opens the eyes of men to opportunities that can bless you i release it upon you now i release it upon you now where men see obstacles may you see opportunities where men see stumbling blocks may you see stepping stones in the name of jesus the bible says god has not given us the spirit of fear fear has kept many people from moving forward fear of everything fear of death fear of failure fear of taking action fear of moving even when god says move you say i'm afraid start that business i'm afraid take a step to marry i'm afraid do this i'm afraid move on further i'm afraid i pray for you in the name of jesus every manifestation of fear every manifestation of fear that has kept your ego on the line that will not allow you soil your hand in destiny to make progress that keeps you from being afraid every manifestation of fear that gives you a feeling of being embarrassed to take a step i cause that fear now i cause that fear now i cause that fear now when they got to the red sea they were afraid and when moses went before the lord he said tell the people to move forward the signs don't go before you they follow you you will have to take a step as a sign that you trust god take the step and die taking it let it be that it was god that killed you there is no man that took a step in the name of the lord that did not return with a testimony for some may trust in horses others may trust in chariots but for us we trust in the name of the lord and everything we do in the name of the lord he said whatsoever you do in word and in deed do it in the name of the lord i pray for you again fear has stopped millionaire businesses from starting up fear has stopped people from applying in places high places they think they are not qualified fear has stopped many of us fear has stopped you from starting the building project who said you are too young so long as god gives you the signal there are some of us all of us are adults in our house but our parents cannot boast of even a simple bungalow because of fear you have ten thousand go and buy a trip of sand and pour it on the ground and leave it there tell the devil i'm coming look let me tell you you will never break through in life till you take the attitude of if i perish i perish i pray the boldness the audacity the strength the audacity to ride through without exhaustion to ride through without fear i release it upon you right now i release it upon you right now i pray for your academics the 10 times better anointing the distinguishing anointing i release it upon you right now i release it upon you right now listen anyone here or any family here that the devil is eyeing for death that is saying you will not see the next month or the end of this year i declare by the mystery of the blood the last card the hallmark of god's victory i judge the manifestation of death over your life i judge the manifestation of death over your family you will travel out and come back safe no arm robber will get you on the road 
No terrorist will attack you on the road. When others say there is a casting down, it will never be your testimony. For you, it will be that there is a lifting up. In the name of Jesus, I pray over your finances. The grace to pay the price now and to pay the price early for a glorious financial future, I release it. Every spirit of laziness, every spirit of carelessness, every spirit of lukewarmness, every inertia, every reluctance to begin to take appropriate financial decisions, especially for the brothers, I cause it to his root now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for those trusting God for a miracle job. I tell you the truth when the hand of the Lord upon you is upon you there will be a door that is open some of you are standing in for yourself and some for your loved ones I pray in the name that is above all names may God give them supernatural jobs jobs that they will be proud of in the name of Jesus and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren it's one thing to be rich is one thing to be blessed but it's another thing to be honored honor is not something that money can buy i pray for you that mantle of honor that makes you distinguished and rewarded everywhere you go i release it upon you right now your superiors will honor you your contemporaries will honor you your subordinates will honor you even your enemies will honor you in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for everything that has died or is dying here I don't care what it is projects that have died ideas that have died dreams that have died I speak to you in the name of Jesus come back to life come back to life visions that have died assignments that have died passions that have died strengths that have died i call it back to life in the name of jesus every voice you have heard that has killed your dreams every voice you have heard that has killed your potentials the voice of your past the voice of your failure the voice of mediocre the voice of limitation i silence those voices from your life I silence those voices from your life. I pray for every ministry represented here. Greater grace and greater glory. Greater grace and greater glory. I pray for every business represented here. Greater grace and greater glory. I pray for every job represented here. Greater grace and greater glory. I pray for every family represented here. Greater grace and greater glory. I pray for every destiny represented here. Greater grace and greater glory. Greater grace and greater glory. Greater grace and greater glory. The Bible says, Thou anointest my head with oil and it makes my cup to run over. There is an anointing that comes upon your head that translates into increase in your life. Thou anointed my head with oil and that oil makes my cup, my source of supply to run over. I pray for you. The anointing that will give you wisdom. The anointing that will give you creativity. The anointing that will give you ideas, insight, concepts, strategies for wealth. I release it upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you in a name that is above all names. Every habit, every issue, every challenge, every weight on your life that is eating up your Christian integrity, that is eating up your work with God. You love God, but there are weights in your life that keep drawing you back to the way of sin. I pray for you. The hand of the Lord lifts you out of that nonsense. The grace of God picks you out of that limitation. Grace to say no to every appearance of evil. Grace to say no to everything that is ungodly. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray a special prayer for our brothers. I curse in your life 
the spirit of irresponsibility. One more time. I curse from your life and your vicinity every spirit that refuses you from rising as a man that you are. That entitlement mentality that makes you think someone else is responsible for your success. I curse that mindset in the name of Jesus. From today I release upon you grace. Grace to rise and take up the challenge of manhood. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. You will not need to defend yourself. The Lord God Almighty will be your defense. The Lord will anoint you in such a way that even your enemies will walk towards your progress. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy restoration for everything you have lost. Restoration. 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 In the name of the Lord Jesus. And I pray for you. A new dimension in the spirit. A new level of prayer grace. A new level of word grace. A new dimension of encounters with the spirit of God. Where you are becoming lukewarm. Where you are losing the initial standard of your Christian experience. Where you are already bending. Bending against the things that would make you powerful. I pray for a restoration for you. Where you have lost the voice of the spirit. I command that you be to hear his voice again. Where you have lost zeal for the house of God. I command a restoration for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray for you. All through the remaining part of May. Into June. Let it be a month of testimonies for you. Beginning from tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. All those who have been looking for you to bless you. May this be the season they find you. All those who have received instructions from God to hold your hands. And lift you up with no strings attached. But have not been able to find you. I pray. Listen. Listen. Samuel had already been ordained. I mean Saul ordained to be a king. But he needed to find Samuel. And they kept searching and he could not find Samuel. Until by the wisdom of God they were able to find him. You can be one anointing away from the next level of your life. You can be one prophetic impartation away. You can be one destiny helper away. I pray again for you. Whoever has been looking for you. Like the lost ass of Samson. Of, of Saul. Whoever has been looking for you to bless you and has not found you, may this be the season they find you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, I pray for you. Nothing will rob your joy this month. This will be the month of June will be for you a month of joy and laughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Before miracle service next month, most or all your prayer requests would have been turned into testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for lifting. 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 My day. Hallelujah. Now, keep standing everybody. You're here and you need to return back to Jesus Christ. Keep standing everyone. You've heard the word of the Lord and you know that you need to make it right with Jesus. Maybe this is the first time you are running to Jesus genuinely to commit your life to him. Or you've once given your life to Jesus and you've seen that you are derailing and you need to make it right tonight. We will not end this meeting without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life or rededicate your life. Wherever you are, make your way to the front right now. We have one minute for this. God bless you. God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. Don't wait for anybody to be the first to come. Make your way. God bless you. God bless you. They are coming inside and outside. Celebrate them, Koinonia. God bless you as you come.
Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. God bless you as you come. Don't be ashamed. He will give you a new beginning. And he will supply grace. That you will go higher and higher. Higher and higher. Keep coming. Young and old, keep coming. Run to Jesus. Keep coming. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Don't sit back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming to make a decision for Jesus. Just raise your right hand and repeat after me consciously and from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. This is, this is a confession that brings salvation unto you. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.